very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. 1,900 years ago, Rome divided Britain with a wall. It's an island whose natural boundaries are the sea. And this wall split families, split tribes. Ever since that moment, we have been debating this issue. And there is two fundamental principles in Britain are what we are debating today. They are in competition. Are we divided nation against nation, or are we unified by culture and language? And there is only one answer to that question. It cannot be simply economics. If a relationship is going wrong, if a marriage is going wrong, the answer cannot simply be to say, you can't afford to break up because you're going to lose the house. The answer has to be only one thing, which is, I love you. And the nature of that love that we express for Scotland, the nature of that love which we express for Scotland, we in this House, we in this House are struggling to express. We're not very good as politicians in talking about emotions. We've become very bad at it. But we need to learn to do it, because otherwise, a party which is trying to reduce, that is trying to shrink that is trying to vanish will win. What do we mean when we say that I, as a Member of Parliament for an English constituency, love Scotland? Well, it will be personal to every single one of us. Could be that we love intellectual seriousness. I was in a boat with the Honourable Member for the Western Isles. He was in a canoe with me a few months ago. We were rowing along. And I would really miss really miss the honourable member from that canoe. <laughs> and from the United Kingdom, we would miss Scotland for different personal reasons. For Scotland's egalitarianism, for Scotland's intellectual seriousness, for Scotland's sense of realism, for Scotland's sense of humour. I would be very ashamed and embarrassed to be part of a country that wouldn't have the Scottish Member of Parliament here. As an expert in foreign affairs, uh, could he tell the House how much stronger Scotland would be um, as an a, 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 a de independent country in relation to, to the world? Yeah. Well, thank the Honourable Member for Motherwell very much. I think there are two answers to that question. One is, of course, Scotland must embrace the potential of being part of the United Kingdom in foreign affairs but also that the Honourable Member himself represents what is good about our political settlement. The fact that the Honourable Member sits on the Foreign Affairs Committee, that there is a Scottish voice on that committee, raising again and again Scottish issues, forcing us in this chamber to focus on Scottish issues when we think about foreign policy, is something that we will deeply, deeply miss and lack. There is, of course, a great appeal to Scottish nationalism. We all feel it. We all feel it in our gut. And we feel it for this reason. The world is bewildering. People are angry. 85% of people in this country feel politics is broken. 87% of people feel society is broken. Our voters feel Westminster is out of touch. They feel their lives have never been so complicated. These are real things that we have to acknowledge and accept. But the answer to those problems is not to get smaller. When we face in our everyday lives complexity, when we face things that are bewildering, when we feel angry, when we feel disappointed, the answer is not to get smaller and shut the door and pretend that we can shut those things out. The answer is to expand. So in the very brief time remaining, three suggestions on what lessons we need to take from Scottish nationalism. <coughs> The first lesson is that it isn't simply that Westminster is too far away, it is also that Edinburgh is too far away. That the answer to the problems of our communities is to represent the issues of Argyll separately to the issues of Perthshire, to the issues of the borders. They are not the same issues. One of the great weaknesses in England, in Ireland, in Wales and in Scotland is the lack of real localism. When you talk to somebody in Muthal struggling with planning, when you talk to someone in Kelso worried about the economic development of their area, where we need to learn from France is from Mitterrand in 1983 
and that is hyper-localism and mayors at a local level, not fooling the Scottish people by pretending that by transferring power from Westminster to Holyrood we are going to solve these human problems. The second thing that we need to do, and this is true of the north of England as much as Scotland, is not to pretend that London and the south of England does not exist. We need to accept that it exists. We need to accept that it is a challenge, that it has huge potential, and that we need to make it work for us, not pretend it is not there. The third thing is cultural links. It is a tragedy that the educational policy of the Scottish National Party has made it more difficult for English students to study in Scottish universities and Scottish students to study in English universities. We must reinforce those cultural links. And finally, what we need is the human expression. 19th of July this year, I am hoping that 100,000 people will gather along that old foreign Roman wall, English, Welsh, Irish, Scots, holding hands, <laughs> linking arms across that border. Because in the end, what matters is not the wall that divides us, but the human ties that bind in the name of love. Yeah.